a rather stylish flashlight. Let me demonstrate it. It's got three modes. You click it once and it goes into full power, produces quite a beam, very bright. I can actually feel the heat on my hand. Uh, a low intensity beam, which has got clear pulsive modulation things going on there. And then a warning advance. Next click turns it off, but when I hold it, it's going to go into strobe mode. So if you have photosensitive epilepsy, just be aware that it's going to strobe briefly now. Pressing the button goes into the strobing mode and the strobing has now stopped. So that's the three modes it's got. I have to say that I was going to use these batteries. I'll show you the battery pack. I was going to use generic cheapy batteries that I had knocking about. The battery pack takes three cells. I've only got two in it because I only had two of these Elfland, also cheapy shitty ones. Uh, claimed to be 3000 milliamp power, actually 500 milliamp power, but it didn't actually come with batteries. However, uh, these ones, just the ones without the pith in the end, are just a loose fit. They, they won't uh, make contact with the contacts in the end, so not a good idea given that they're all in parallel to use something like that. Make sure you use batteries that fit tightly, or better still, just don't buy the thing at all, because it has slight problems, as I shall show you. Anyway, three batteries, an interesting construction here that it's got the outer ring is the negative and the inner ring is the positive. And these brass-like contacts readily accept magnets, so they're actually steel, with a little hint of brassy colour. The whole construction of this is lovely, in the sense that it's designed with this sort of, it's that general sort of machining look it's got. So this comes off as well with that decorative ring and an O-ring. And that reveals the contact, the end. And one thing I have a slight reservation about here is if you put really high capacity, low resistance cells, low internal impedance cells in this, then it could potentially, as you put this in, if something went wrong, if something, you know, this spring can theoretically bridge onto that contact, whether that would happen now, I don't really know. Hopefully not. Hopefully it would go down nice and square, not skid to the side. Um... The LEDs in the front are the typical Cree alikes. Goodness knows if they're actually Cree or just copies. I'm going to guess they're copies. I shall tame this down so you can actually just see in there that it's those little sort of square Cree type LEDs. And I thought that's quite nice that the construction of this uh, mounts them all together so that they're all pressed onto what is basically a big thin heat sink here. But it's not as good as that. Let me show you. So the front uh, unscrews each of these rings unscrews and when they do the circuit board inside the, the reflector oh, there's a little plastic thing not sure what that was for I think it was a spacer between the reflector and the LED you've got a glass lens which is nice you get the locking ring and then you've got this uh, reflector here that as you tighten that in it pushes the LED down tightly onto the circuit onto the set of aluminium housing it's actually spring-loaded so, theoretically, I thought it was going to push it down onto the aluminium housing and make a good thermal connection. But in reality, when this is screwed together, you can press these down. It's not making a good thermal connection. Um, I don't think this is plastic, metalised plastic, so that's not going to act as a thermal conductor to heat away from the LEDs. I also noticed when I ran this on my bench power supply that the... Uh, there, it's almost like there's no real current limiting for the LEDs at full power. It, uh, it was wanting to draw significant quantities of current at around about 4 volts. So let's take this off. Let's uh, unscrew this and see what happens. It's nicely machined. I do like the machining. That reveals... Presumably all the LEDs just connected in parallel in here. Is there a little pudding joint in there? Let's go further. I already looked out the correct tool for these. This is surprisingly loose. Uh, so we'll take this off as well. Maybe the insert on the other side comes out to reveal the wiring. It also has a charging port that takes a little uh, jack, so it's sort of maybe a fairly proprietary standard. What have we got in here? Let's pull that off. Um, I may have to try and unscrew this in some way. There's also, incidentally, a little uh, quarter-inch sort of jack, uh, not jack, uh, quarter-inch uh, tripod receptacle here for mounting a tripod. Uh, right. I'm going to try and remove this. I'm not sure how lucky I'm going to be in trying to remove it. Let's use pliers. Ooh, that's turning. That's good. 
no cut needed. Apart from cutting my fingers, it feels quite sharp. Oh, the wiring inside is suddenly getting very tight here. This has got a very tight wiring limb. So I'm guessing the circuit board may be in the top here. We'll find out when we open it. This wants to spring right back. There it goes, there it goes. Oh yeah, oh blank. No, there's a circuit board there. Okay, that's unexpected. So now to get that circuit board out, I guess I have to find something to go in here. Uh, I don't know if we've got long nose, long nose pliers that are going to do that. Let's use the usual poke the scissor tips in and see if that works and stab myself in the process. Oh, this is where I burst my scissors. Oh, that is not really want to come out. I shall experiment with that. I think I've got a tool that may do that, but I'm not really sure. Let's take a look in here and then I'll take that circuit board out. Uh, where is the correct screwdriver for that? Where have I put the screwdriver? That's the wrong screwdriver for that. I have misplaced one of my screwdrivers. Uh, they're usually in the vicinity here somewhere. This is where I may actually have to pause and look for that screwdriver. If I do, uh, I'll take the advantage of that. I'll also take that little insert out to get gain access to the circuit board. But at the moment I'm seeing the switch contacts and I'm probably seeing probably the white ones and then the charging lead coming down here. But I want this open. So uh, I'm going to pause momentarily while I do that. What a strange design. I've completely stripped it, as you can probably see. The circuit board is very simple. It looks suspiciously as if it's out a standard flashlight. And all they've done is they've patched lots of wires onto the back. Basically where resistors might have been in the past. So the circuitry itself has a flashlight controller chip driving a MOSFET. And uh, that then switches the LEDs. That's fundamental. That there is absolutely no current limiting. There may have been resistors designed to be used in the past for other lights, but it's not been used here. I'm also not sure what these pads are used for. They're heading over to that uh, flashlight type control chip. I don't see any resistor in series. I thought that might have been another LED, an indicator LED, but it's not. Um, right, tell you what, I shall show you the schematic, but things worthy of note. Having looked at this closer, the construction is such that they've got a heat spreader that goes underneath the LED. So here's the LED. There is a heat spreader under it with a space for the wires to go through. And there's a spring. And the spring is the bit that is effectively... Here's one of the springs. There's one of the springs. The wires go down inside the spring. And the spring effectively pushes this up against the reflector cup. The reflector cup it has this little uh, uh, plastic spacer on it that goes over the square LED and aligns the reflector. And when the front glass is put on, this all smooshes down against that. But although it's got that aluminium heat spreader, there's no direct contact to here. And I wondered if maybe they'd assembled it wrongly. And it was designed to have the reflector on that, the heat spreader pressed firmly against the back of this housing, and then the spring on top. But there is a sort of lip that almost fits for a spring, but this spring is too small, and it doesn't matter anyway, because when you put it into the tube like this, uh, the reflector physically stops well short. It can't go back far enough to actually uh, press against that LED, so that wouldn't work. That's why the spring's at the back. So it doesn't have proper LED heat sinking. It also doesn't have that uh, current limiting. I think they've just worked on the basis that, you know, the wiring has a bit of resistance and the LED voltage will shoot up once it's reached a certain power level, although that would have benefited from that, that heat sinking. Let me show you the schematic. The schematic isn't that complicated. The back of the circuit board, incidentally, is just basically two pads. It's got the large uh, positive uh, pad with the spring and then it's got this outer bus bar along the outside and the positive spring, this row of uh, holes come in. Uh, plated through holes is coming in under here. It's coming straight to the area of the MOSFET. Um, and the outer one is just, uh, there's a plated through hole every so often, just partly for the electrical connection in a traditional flashlight. The circuitry is not that complicated. Let me just zoom down and show you this. We have the three lithium cells going to a common bus line, uh, 4.2 volts, say, because that's the full charge voltage. The charger is coming in on this little jack connector here. The only wires in this are the connector and the 
clicky button with the two white wires and it's going straight to the batteries. I can't remember what charger came with that. I have a sneaky feeling it wasn't that fancy, almost like it could overcharge the batteries. So whatever charger you use, it's going to have to either be current limited and be 4.2 volts maximum, or these are going to have to be protected. I'd recommend protected cells, particularly given the construction of this battery pack. So it's got the 4.2 volt uh, rail, which the charger goes straight to the batteries. And it generates, for this mystery flashlight chip, it generates a supply voltage with a 100 ohm resistor and a capacitor just purely for decoupling so that this gets a nice smooth supply, even when it's pulsing and flashing the output and the voltage is yo-yoing up and down. The button simply goes from one of the pins of that chip to the 0 volt rail. And then the output goes to the MOSFET, which is a P-channel MOSFET. It's pulled up, the gate of it is pulled up to the positive rail by this 10K resistor, very common. That keeps it turned off. When this pulls it to the negative rail, that's what turns that uh, transistor on, and that just powers those LEDs directly with basically clamps them right across the batteries. So I'm um, very strange. It's a bit of a ferocious light. If I have to be absolutely honest, although it's nicely engineered, I certainly wouldn't consider using this. Yeah, with protected batteries it might be okay, but I'm not sure how long the LEDs are going to last because they are effectively just being clamped straight across a battery and that's not really good for them. Particularly given there's no heat sink. And it's a shame because like this custom uh, cast aluminium housing with a nice finish and the turned aluminium sections, it's all really nicely made. It's just like it's completely lacking on the electronic side. Even the button is nice. That is quite smart, isn't it? How they've used a little push-in insert there uh, f to trap that uh, rubber button in that protrudes through onto the, the push button. It looks so nicely designed. It's just crap. The electronics are just not up to scratch. Maybe it was a prototype. Maybe they moved on. But having said that, I can't say I've really seen that many of these about. Uh, I bought this in a while back. And maybe it just wasn't a success. Maybe they had problems with it uh, overcharging or or the LEDs burning out quite quickly because of the complete lack of proper heat sinking. But there we go. That's it. It's taken to bits. It's done. It was interesting. Nicely machined. Terrible electronics.